Hello and welcome to Happy Bending. I'm Bill, and today we're going to be making our own flavor strip. Happy Bending. We're almost up to 2,000 subscribers on Happy Bending, so if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the like button and all that stuff. I really would appreciate it. You know, today we're going to be talking about vending strips, and vending strips are the little labels that go in your vending machine to tell the customers what products you're vending. Now, you always want to use professional looking vending strips, whether you're buying them from a company like these, which I got from DS Vending, which has a lot of uh, hard to find vending strips, or you're going to make them in some type of computer program. You don't wanna really hand write on a piece of paper or a piece of cardboard like you know, Pepsi and then slide it into the machine because it doesn't look professional and it will actually hinder sales because people would be less likely to bend from the machine because it's not as appealing and they figure out this machine might not work. Now this stack of uh, vending strips, like I said, I got from DS Vending. And I'm just gonna show you what some of the professionally made ones look like. Now this one is an older one for Powerade. I can tell it's older because it doesn't have the calorie listing on it. By law, all flavor strips now should have a listing of how many calories are in the product, whether it's a drink or a snack. This is a more modern Powerade label, Powerade Zero, zero calories. I got a lot of unique flavors here. These are harder ones to find, but there are other companies on the internet like Snack Attack which also provide a lot of Venn labels or flavor strips like these. Uh, however, a lot of those are more commonly found. Now, when you're buying these flavor strips, you wanna make sure you're getting the right size for your machine. These ones are uh, for your older machines like your G3 machines or your Dixie Narco 501E or your 276E. They're approximately one and a half inches up and down by three and a half inches across. That's the size of them. Uh, the chameleon front machines need a much longer, um, almost the size of the product itself label. And those are harder to find in unique flavors. I don't have any of the chameleon front, so I don't have to worry about that. Sometimes if you have an older machine, uh, they're just not making those flavor strips anymore and you have to make those yourself as well. Those might be like five inches by two inches up and down. Or for me, sometimes it's very hard to find like a diet flavor, like a zero calorie flavor vent strip that I would need at a school to vent during the day. So I have to make it myself. So I'm going to run through making a vent label here on my computer. I'm going to use Photoshop because it's a program I've been using for many years and I'm very familiar with how it works. If you don't have Photoshop, you can always download a free photo editing program on the internet or even use something like Microsoft Publisher, something that you can combine different elements together and it has a ruler on it so that you make sure you're within the right size. But for today, I'm using Photoshop and I'm going to make a Venn strip for Cherry Vanilla Coke. So I'm using a Mac computer, but Photoshop runs pretty much the same on a PC. It doesn't really matter. So the first thing we're gonna do is open up Google Chrome and search for Cherry Vanilla Coke label. And then I'm gonna to go to Images and just see what's available here. I mean, there's different options. I'm just going to use this one right here. The resolution is 500 by 500. It's not too bad. It's not the best, but it will do. And notice that the calories on a can of this, and I am vending cans, is 140 calories. And it says it here real small, but that's probably going to be too small to use. I'm going to have to use a, a higher quality calorie label on here. I'm going to save the image as. 
I'm going to save it on my desktop underneath this folder I made called Flavor Strips. And I'm just going to call this Cherry Vanilla Download. It's a JPEG, which is good. So we'll go in here. And I have a couple other graphics in here. And these are actual flavor strips that I purchased that I scanned on my scanner. I have an orange vanilla Coke label, which has the right number of calories. So I could actually grab this off of here and put it onto another label. I have this grape crush. Notice this is the wrong number of calories. But this one has the little piece that allows you to pull out the flavor strip from the top and then the one here on the side. It's also a slightly different design. It has a bar on the bottom. I think I'm going to do one like this. So I'm going to open up this in Photoshop. I'm going to crop it down using my crop tool to the actual size of the graphic. It was a little slanted when I scanned it so I'm just rotating it a little bit. Press the return key and now it's cropped it down. I want to use the same type of bar but I want it to be on top of the other image that I'm going to bring in so I'm going to make this bottom bar a separate layer. I'm going to use my quick selection tool and just select it. There we go get this part of it too. And now that it's selected, I'm going to go up to layer and say new layer via cut. And the cut was the part that I selected. So if you look over here now, I have the background. If I turn off the background, you'll see that little bar remains. It's a separate layer now. So now I'm going to go and open up the little artwork that I downloaded off the internet. I'm going to open that in Photoshop as well. Before I drag this over, I got to get rid of this white on the top and the bottom. I'm going to zoom in on this. The more you zoom in on it, the fuzzier it gets. You can see that this stuff up here and here at the bottom is just completely unusable for this resolution. So I'm just going to get rid of it from there. But first I'm going to crop down the image to just get the part that I need. I don't need all this white. And I'm going to clone out this. I'm going to use my clone tool. Now if you didn't have a clone tool, you could just select this color and then paint over it, I assume. But the clone tool lets me select an area. So I'm sampling this area and then I go up into another area and it, and it takes from down there and puts up there. This is how you get rid of blemishes on somebody's face, like you clone out a zit or something from another part of their face. So there we go, we got rid of that. Just have a solid color down here. I'm gonna sample this area and just get rid of this because you can't read it. There's no sense in keeping it there. Get it nice and clean. Rip this off. And then just use my move tool, grab here, and then drag it into this graphic. You can see how much smaller it is from the other one. So I'm going to resize it, keep it in proportion, drag it down. And I want it to actually stay before this area here because this part you don't see. This is just a little tab that you can pull out the graphic. So I have to make sure all the important parts are from here and within here. And I'm going to change my layering here. I'm going to pull that little bottom part up above so that you can see that. I got a little bit of extra here down here at the bottom. If I want to be able to see all of the C on the Coke, I got this little bit of extra. So what I can do is I can extend this bottom bar up to fill up that area. I'm going to change the color of this because this grape doesn't really fit a cherry vanilla. I can either make that bar, you know, like this red or I can make it a pink. I think I'm going to actually sample some of the color in the cherry here and make this a much darker red. And then as far as this part, even though we don't see it, I can fill that in with this pink in case you do see a little bit of it 
we can just simply sample this pink color. Use my paint bucket tool, which is hiding underneath my gradient tool, and choose my background and just paint in there like that. Uh, over here I have this writing here, so I might want to use my my paint brush tool. That's oh, a really big brush. I don't really need that size. A little tip that you can do is you can use your selection tool and select an area that you're going to be painting in. And then use your paintbrush. And it doesn't matter that it's a big paintbrush. It's not going to paint outside the selection area. It's not painting on this part because that's a separate layer. And I don't have that layer selected right now. Deselect that now. This area of the pink is lighter than over here. So if I want to make that lighter, I would have had to sample the pink over on this side. Select that again. But once again, like I said, nobody's going to really see this little tab. I'm just doing it to make it look nice. Now let's deselect. See, that's a lot better match over there. You still see that it's not a full match on the top, but once again, I mean, nobody's going to really see it. So now let's take care of the color of this bar. We're going to sample the color of the cherry in the dark area of the cherry. I can now highlight that layer, use my paint bucket tool again, and just click in there and paint that bar. I'm going to have to use my paintbrush anyhow to paint up a little higher on this. Once again, I'm going to use my selection tool to select the area that I don't want to go above, which is right about there. And now that I've selected that, I can grab my paintbrush and just paint in there. And I needed to cover over the crush. I can leave the 12 ounce because it is going to be a 12 ounce. I could retype that with my text tool. I'm going to zoom in on this, grab my paintbrush, just change the size of it, come down to a more workable size. Notice it's not letting me paint because my selection box is over there. I'm going to deselect, grab that, paint that. I got that little spot inside the O. I can use my paint bucket and just try to color in there. That doesn't look too bad. I think I'm going to leave the 12 ounce. And now I'm going to get my text tool and just like it said, grape crush in there, I'm going to type Coca-Cola cherry vanilla, sort of in that same style. So using my text tool, we'll just get the text first. Coke, uh, it's using the color I have selected. I need to make that. I'm going to make it the same white that they're using for the Coca-Cola up there. I'm not crazy about this font, so I'm probably going to change that. But I'm just getting the text in right now. Let's get it in a little smaller. I mean, it's not terrible text. But we can try a different font. I've never heard of this font before, but it, it actually doesn't look too bad. Be like that. And here we go. Now this number up here, I guess, you know, that was the number for the other graphic. I can, once again, sample the pink, use my paintbrush tool, and simply just I gotta highlight the background and paint over that. No need to have that there. Now I'm gonna have to add the calorie count on this. I gotta put the 140 calories. So to do that, I'm going to open up that one. This label has the correct um, calorie count. I'm gonna open that in Photoshop. Here it is. So to select this, I'm gonna use my magnetic lasso tool, which is gonna sort of stick to the 
boundaries of the object I'm selecting, which is this 140 calories per can label. Go back to the beginning and there it is. It's a little in, it's more on the inside of the label. So I wanna expand that selection area a little bit. So I go under selection, modify, I wanna expand. Contract would make the selection area smaller. I'm gonna expand it. By how many pixels? I don't know, let's try two. It's pretty good. Maybe missing a little bit on the left side. I can try to center my selection. Maybe I'll expand it by one more pixel. One pixel. All right, so that looks good. I'm gonna rip this graphic down so I see my other graphic. And I'm just gonna use my move tool and yank this from there to over here. I just gotta make sure the layering is right. So I gotta drag this layer all the way to the top. And there it is. Gotta decide where I wanna put it. Do I want it that big? Do I want it down here? Maybe I can resize it a little bit. Liam, how does that look? My son is here. I think it should be. I think it should be in that at the corner. I think it should be in the bottom corner with the, in the bar. And get that down here. Yeah. I don't think it hurts to have it extending up a little bit. Liam thinks it should be down here. If I made it smaller, it might be too small to read. We got to be careful making it too small to read. I'm gonna save this now. All my hard work. I don't want to lose it. Save. You always want to save it as the Photoshop files so that you can go back later and make some modifications. The only other thing I could add if I wanted to is a price. Sometimes I do that. So once again, I can grab my text tool and I sell these for a dollar. So I do a dollar, decide what color I want it. You know, I can make it the red here. And you know, sh shrink it down. Or I can make this white and put it down in here and then move the, the 140 calories up. What do you think, Liam? Do you think I should have the price down here in this bar and move this back up? I was thinking maybe what if you put it, kept it where it is and then made it the, the bark, the cherry color right there. Like put it here below the cherry vanilla, but then made it that. Liam would rather see the text, the dark red. So I'm gonna highlight that sample, this color. And there we go. Do you like that then, Liam? Yes, I do like that. So here we go. We have a pretty professional looking flavor strip that we made in under a half hour just by combining some different elements that we found. Now I'm just going to print this on regular copy paper, but then I'm going to laminate it so that it's more rigid and it will last a long time in the machine if I'm pulling it in and out. So let's print. I'm going to print away. All right. And there you have it. Looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this. Well, let's go cut it out and laminate it. I'm just gonna carefully cut this out. I only have one machine where the labels load in on the side and the old buttons, it's my Merlin 4. But this is not going in the Merlin 4, so I'm just gonna cut that section off. I need the top on my G3 machines, they, then they fit in from the top down. So I gotta leave this part. Now as far as how much I cut off on the side, sometimes you have to bring scissors with you when you get to your machine. Sometimes you have to do a little extra trimming on them. So I got the laminator here warming and we got some laminating pouches. This is just a laminator from Walmart, nothing fancy. We have a couple of these, we got one at Staples too I think. And you get these nice little pouches. I try to laminate multiple things at once so that 
I don't waste so much of this laminating pouch, but for the sake of the video, I only have this one thing to laminate. These laminating pouches are three millimeters, so that's why we have that selected, but the ready light is not yet lit. Okay, just popped on now. So let's line this up and it will start feeding into the machine. You want to get it level, otherwise it starts coming in on an angle. Look how nice it, it even brings out the colors a little bit more after it's laminated. It gives it that nice gloss look. It really does make it look like a professional flavor strip. I usually let it cool off a little bit before I cut it out. The top doesn't matter, it can extend beyond the top. But the edges, you have to have it really tight, otherwise it won't fit into your machine. But once again, I'll bring scissors with me down to the machine so that I can trim it if need be. There's my finished Venn strip. Let's go throw it in the machine. So I'm down by the machine now, and I'm going to put it right here, third selection down. I have the machine loaded up with regular cherry vanilla Coke. Just slides down like this, and I measured it perfectly it doesn't even need to be trimmed and there it is let's close it up looks like a professional Venn label this one down here is a professional one and this one here is the one that I just made and they look very similar nobody would know if you do buy these things online the ones that DS vending and the ones at Snack Attack they cost a dollar a Venn label. Now, DS Vending has a minimum order of $20, so you don't want to just buy one anyhow. If you're buying Venn labels, select 20, 30 of them that you think you might need because you have to pay shipping anyhow. It might be $10, $15 in shipping. You might as well just get them all at once and save shipping down the road from you having to order just one or two that you need. But if you don't want to bother, um, finding ones online to buy, then do as I did and make your own. Hopefully now you know how to make your own flavor strips and as always, happy vending. <laughs>